Did you know you can get X API tracking inside of a learning management system, depending on your learning management system, and get a lot more tracking than you can with like regular SCORM? Well, we're gonna learn about how you can do that today. All right, welcome back. My name is Jeff Bat with Learning Dojo, and if you haven't already, go ahead and check out my website, learningdojo.ninja. You can see my blog with all the previous tips and tricks that I have. You can see templates and download games, uh, templates inside of Storyline. You can also download XAPI templates as well. You can also check out my courses. I have courses on Articulate Storyline 360. I have courses on Adobe Captivate XAPI Fundamentals if you wanted to be able to track content away from a learning management system, uh, Articulate Rise, Custom SCORM, as well as HTML5. So go ahead and check that out. But today we're gonna to learn about how to track XAPI-like statements inside of a learning management system. Now, this will depend if your learning management system can handle this, but you can actually export right from Storyline without having to do any type of custom code and get more data than you could with like SCORM. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now I have this sample course. You can take whatever course that you have in Storyline. If you wanted to just create a couple pages and follow along here, you can do that. But when I'm publishing, typically we publish to SCORM 1.2, SCORM 2004, or AICC when we're creating courses. Now we can publish to Tin Can API, which is actually Experience API, if you're familiar with that, or X API. But Tin Can API is the old name of it, and I'm not sure why Storyline hasn't updated that yet. But you can also publish to CMI5, which is very similar to Tin Can API, but it's a lot more strict as far as the types of verbs. And so I feel like this, when you're publishing this out and you're gonna have this content on a learning management system, I feel like this is probably the best way to go. Now, if I come into the reporting and tracking inside of Storyline, you will set up how you want this to be reported over, what the title inside of your learning management system is going to be, what the description is as well. When you upload it to your learning management system, you can also set that there. But if you're uploading several versions, instead of having to rewrite the description every single time you can do that instead of articulate storyline here now also you can change the course id now this does have to be a url with x api or with tin can api the id is usually your url your domain url and then with some unique id at the end of it so I would have to change this over to like learningdojo.net as well. But I'm not going to worry about that for now. The launch URL typically is the index underscore lms.html. So keep that in mind. But I'm also going to come over to tracking here and make sure that my tracking is set because I'm going to say that the learner has to visit 95% of the pages inside of the course. I typically don't do 100% because I've seen so many times where people say that they've completed the course, but they've accidentally skipped a page. I don't know how they do that, but I've seen it happen several times. And then also the quiz, where the settings are inside of the results. You have to select the results and what the final assessment is. Make sure that that is all set and then go ahead and click OK. Now from here, I'm gonna make sure that this is saved on my desktop because I am running uh, inside of Parallels and on a Mac. I'm gonna make sure that's published to my Mac version here. Then I'm gonna go ahead and click on Publish here. Now, depending on the size of your course, this may take a little while. So you're exporting out images, you're exporting out all your video files and so forth. And then it's going to uh, prepare this so you can upload it to a learning management system. Now, while that's exporting, the test learning management system that I use all the time is actually cloud.scorm.com. You can go ahead and check it out and you can also sign up for a free account. And the free account allows you to upload SCORM packages to test it out. It also gives you a free learning record store. So if you're going to send data from an external source, then you can send the data over to this learning record store as well. We're going to import this content into this learning management system so we can make course assignments and do our regular learning management system stuff, but it's going to track XAPI data. If I wanted to track data that's somewhere else, 
Well, that's where you'd have to follow a different process. If you're wanting to learn how to do that, check out my blog on sending over your first X API statement. I walk you through how to send over X API statements from an external source. It does not have to, your content does not have to be inside of a learning management system. So this is an important part. As soon as the course is done publishing, make sure that you click on zip. If you don't do this, sometimes your learning management system will, if you zip it wrong, will reject it and say that it was wrong or it's invalid. So I'm gonna click on zip here and just let Storyline handle the work here. And now it's gonna create this zip file on my desktop. Now, because I'm running parallels, I'm gonna switch over to my Mac side. And you can see here, there is my Cooking 101 right there. Now I'm going to add my content. So I'm gonna import a SCORM, AICC, XAPI, or CMI5 package. We've created a CMI5 package, so I'm gonna go ahead and import that. Click on Browse here and then find my zip folder and click on upload and then import course. Now this is key, make sure that your learning management system can handle CMI5 packages or 10 can API packages as well, because if it can't, you're not gonna get this same type of reporting. So that is key, make sure you ask your learning management system that question. I find that most of them uh, at least allow you to do that. Not all of them will allow you to have external content. You need a learning record store for something like that. All right, so our, our course is uploaded. I'm gonna go ahead and click on launch here. It's going to launch my course. Here's my course and I can go through and start experiencing my course. So you can see I have different interactions and different things here. I'm not gonna go through the entire course here, but I'm going to just close that out and come back into SCORM Cloud. And you'll notice one thing inside of SCORM Cloud here, which is the view registration statement history. This is where I can see the X API statements that are coming into SCORM Cloud. Now this will differ depending on your learning management system, so keep that in mind. But you can see right here, Jeff Bat launched, Jeff Bat initialized, Jeff Bat attempted, Jeff Bat experienced, and then the page name and experienced all these different pages. And then it will even say Jeff Bat terminated, meaning that I closed the course at that point. That is a whole lot more data than we get with SCORM but we stick with SCORM. So why aren't we using CMI5 when we get a whole lot more data? We can see when the, the learner terminates, we can see what pages they're visiting. Uh, we can also see if they go back and they visit several pages. Now, based off of that, your learning management system may then be able to create reports and see you know, how many times people are going back to a certain page, how many, where are they dropping off in the course? That's a lot of data, and this does not have to, you don't have to do any type of programming for this kind of data, but yet we don't talk about this or we don't use this. And so that's why I wanted to at least show you the type of data that comes in with a CMI5 package. Uh, and it runs exactly like a regular SCORM course. You upload it to your learning management system exactly like a regular SCORM course, but it gives you a lot more data. And it's in that format of an X API statement, which is the person the verb, and then whatever action that they've done. And in fact, I can expand that, any one of those, and get all the different types of information here and see all that information right there. So that's just a whole lot of data that we can get, which then allows us to improve our courses and uh, get better at tracking and seeing the effectiveness of our learning as well. So I wanted to show you that and just show you the type of data that you could be working with here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, make sure that you subscribe. And if you wanted to check out my website, learningdojo.ninja, you can check out other tips on my blog. You can download templates. You can also check out my courses on Storyline 360, Adobe Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, Articulate Rise, SCORM, and also HTML5. So check that out. Hopefully that was useful to you, and I'll see you in the next video.